Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. We're going to have another video on It's Simple, It's Just Not Easy. Interesting title, isn't it? If you haven't been with us, I ask you to stick around so that you can get a hold of what we're talking about. We do these videos regularly, twice a week, Tuesday and Friday, for the purpose of number one, to help God or to help you allow God to become more real in your life. I've said this many times, it bears repetition always, and that is religion does a really good job of eliminating the tangibility of God. Religion is all about you having uh, all the formalities and yet denying the power of God or just not recognizing God at all. In other words, how many people can quote a scripture about God or even can debate hold their own in an argument about God, but they can't get an answer to their prayer, or there's no tangibility of God in their life. This is the reason why we do these videos. Number two, when God starts to become real, then faith becomes more natural. Know this, that Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word is not the Bible or Logos. The word is God speaking or the relationship of him relaying information to you. Now, of course, we know that the Bible was a rhema or spoken information uh, from God to somebody to write it down. And we see all through the Bible individuals interacting with God for the sake of their wonderful testimonies in this world of things that change because of the other world where they were connected to God. So you can read the Bible and God will speak to you from the word. But that's not the only way. In fact, not everybody has a Bible. So if that's the case, then someone would be limited if that was the number one way. The number one way is what everybody has the opportunity to connect to, and that is God the Holy Ghost. And so the Spirit of God is speaking to you, and the more real God is, well, then obviously the more your faith is boistered because God being real just gives confidence to your faith. I mean, one word of God spoken to your heart will cause you to run through a troop and jump over a wall, just meaning by that saying that it'll cause you to stand right in the midst of the worst of things and not budge and watch God deliver you and set you free. Number three, we want you to have testimonies. So we always give you Matthew eleven twenty-seven 27 to 30 in the Message Bible because it so wonderfully invites us by the Lord Jesus himself, don't you love that, into a personal relationship with him not just information about him. Amen. And notice what it says. Now Jesus resumed talking, uh, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired? worn out, burned out on religion. Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Well, all those statements that Jesus makes about keeping company with him, walking with him, working with him, watching how he does it, does that mean that you watch how he does it through the scriptures? That you walk with him through the scriptures? See, most people would say yes, because their concept of actually walking with a person and listening to him and being aware of him is not really a part of their Christianity. Their Christianity is solely in the Bible. Now, is that wrong or is that bad? Well, obviously it's not bad because the things that are written for us are there as instruction manuals for us to find God, experience God, see what other people did in their experiences, and likewise open our heart and mind to the same. So, of course, it's wonderful. 
But you realize when you receive Christ, you go directly from your heart right to the very heart of God. And then what most everybody does is take you to the scriptures or to a manual as a diversion to go to the manual then to get back to God. When you experienced him directly from your heart to him, to his heart. Now, obviously, we want to, we want to bring in the scriptures and give people a solid foundation, give them the doctrines that will hold them steady in a time of difficulty. But don't we want to fan the flame of the spark inside of you coming alive and God coming to live in you? Wouldn't that also be necessary to fan that flame? Isn't it interesting that Paul had to, uh, after a period of time, begin to encourage Timothy to fan a flame? Meaning that wasn't something that was as normal to him as maybe... Timothy being encouraged to, you know, study the doctrine and show himself approved. You see, it's really easy to go to things that are in this world to give us information about the things that are in the other world instead of just going to the other world. Jesus made the comment to Nicodemus, you know, he said, Nicodemus, why are you struggling? I said you must be born again. And well, how in the world can I get back into my mother's womb? Nicodemus said, I, I don't think that's possible. And Jesus is like, no, Nicodemus, that's, that's not what we're saying here. He, he said, that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. So Jesus is talking a pure spiritual reality. And it will influence your flesh, but the flesh isn't involved in you being born again. And Nicodemus is still like, how can these things be? And he said, well, wait a minute. You know, uh, the, the spirit is like the wind. Uh, can you see the wind or do you see what the wind actually does? And he goes, well, I get it. You see what the wind does. It goes, so is the spirit of God. It's something for you to believe in and you'll see the results of it in this world. And then Nicodemus still said, I, I just still am struggling with these things because isn't it interesting that someone that spent so much time in the scriptures had no conceptual idea of how to connect to God spiritually. That's very interesting. And then Jesus made these comments and he said, you know, he said, listen, he said, you know, the things that I share with you are things that I know, things that I've experienced. I'm sharing with you things that are real. He said, listen, Nicodemus over in the 12th verse, if I'm sharing things in this natural or earthly world that help to relate to things in the heavenly world and you won't wrap your brain around it. What if I just went directly from my heart right to the spiritual world and shared things of that other world? What would that do to you? In other words, what he was saying is, Nicodemus, you should be able to get this. I'm using earthly examples to help you to understand spiritual concepts that will draw you into a spiritual connection. But if you're not even getting this, my goodness, I mean, what, what would happen if I just went directly to spiritual things that would just blow your mind? Oh, glory. You see, it's simple. It's just not easy. And Nicodemus is an example of why it's not easy because he was so formulated and he had such patterns and routines of the flesh connecting to the flesh and bypassing the spiritual reality that when it came time to connect to the spiritual things, Nicodemus was struggling badly. And people do that all the time. And that's what will happen if your relationship with God vertically is only through the means of the scriptures or the church you go to or the tapes that you listen to or the preacher that you love. It has to become real to you. I remember even being at Rama and at the school and, 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 and teachers saying, and it wasn't just one that would say, if you really want these truths that we're sharing with you to be yours, you're going to have to actually do something with them. You're going to have to act on them. You're going to have to put them into to, uh, put them into practice. And then as you put them into practice, 
you consciously will become united to them because you'll see how they work and then they're yours. Otherwise, you can tell somebody else about what you learned, but not actually walk in it yourself. And we're really saying these things very strongly and yet through different means. So this is exactly what we're talking about when we're sharing that it's simple, it's just not easy. So we've been sharing some wonderful things and we came over here to 2 Corinthians in chapter 5 and I know this is a great passage in the Amplified. I'm just going to skip on down to verse 15. It says, And he, Jesus, died for all, so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves. Interesting concept. We're going we're gonna to live in and to for Christ, not for ourselves. See, this is a wonderful thought that goes with simple, just not easy. See, the paradigm is shifting. The way you think needs to change because you've changed. Yes, that's right. Praise the Lord. You've changed. You're no longer the same person. Now you're different. You're a brand new creature in Christ. You're even a new species of being. In other words, if you went from, now this, hold on get it? I'm, I'm just making an example. I'm not talking about reincarnation. But if you went from being a horse to a human, you'd have a big, huge curve to change. You'd have to think totally different. You wouldn't be eating hay anymore. You wouldn't be outside. You wouldn't be on all fours. You'd be upright. What a huge change. Is it possible that even though your body doesn't seem to have changed as far as what you've looked like, and you still recognize the senses of hear, smell, see, taste, touch, all those things in this earth, but you've completely changed as real and as drastic as there could be a change from a sin nature being to a God nature being. You're going to have to figure out and find out what this change looks like. Yes, and at that moment you change. There was something in your heart that knew there was more to you than met the eye and that God was real because your heart opened up and those spiritual uh, um, senses of your spirit came alive. John 14, 18 uh, to 21 in the Message Bible. They came alive. At that moment, Jesus said, you will know absolutely, you will experience the reality with absoluteness that I am in you and you are in me and we are in the Father. Wow, that's a change. Now we've got to fan the flame of that change so that change becomes real. And you can fan it with information from the Word of God. Hey, look it, I'm actually using the Bible for this purpose. So no one could say, well, you know, Jim, he just doesn't seem to really care about the Bible anymore. That would be such a lie. I'm just trying to help you to see that you're more dimensional than just going to the scriptures for your knowledge about God. You actually, praise the Lord, can go directly to God and experience him for yourself. And that's what Adventures in Grace is all about. That God's grace is everywhere. His influence is constantly in and surrounding your life. And if you'll pay attention to it, if you'll acknowledge it, if you'll look for it, you'll find it, you'll experience it, you'll want to experience it again because it will mean changes in this world. And then you'll get to the point where not only are you experiencing it, you're going to want to actually help to give it away to somebody else. What a great progression. Simple just not easy. Now, I don't want you, your head to get stuck in the not easy part. We're using that to just show you that there's needed, there is needed a change in the way you see things because God has made it very, very simple. And people that don't have religion can go very fast and very far if they're brought into the experience of God the correct way. So I'm going to keep on going. It goes on to say in verse 16, Consequently, from now on, we esteem and regard no one from a purely human point of view in terms of natural standards of value. Well, the King James says we judge no man after the flesh. We what? We judge no man after the flesh. Well, are you a man? Quote, unquote, man. In other words, man and woman, human being. The answer would be Yes. Now, now, don't get mixed up in that. People are so mixed up in what they are. Am I a male? Am I a female? You are a human being. 
Amen. And to figure out what you are should be very, very simple. Let's get absolute with this. Now you're a spiritual being. And you always were, but your spiritual being has come alive where your spiritual being now is to take the seat of dominion, authority over the person that you are so that it's spirit, soul, and body. No longer is your soul and your body going to make all the decisions. Now you live out of your spirit. That's what Paul said. Walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Yes. Yes, you're living out of your spirit and that connection to God. And it says here, we judge no man after the flesh. Well, I looked up the word judge. It means to form an opinion or conclusion about something. That's very interesting. It means to decide in court or a case. Interesting. It means to give a verdict on someone in a court or give a verdict to yourself. You're not supposed to give verdicts anymore. You're not supposed to say, man, I'm really sick. Man, I just can't do it anymore. I can't make it. I'm such a loser. I wish I could do it, but I just can't. Oh, God, please help me. You're coming to a conclusion. You're coming to a, an opinion. You're making a verdict in court, your own court. You're becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. You are speaking to your future that you can't, that you just can't. You just don't know how. You're just not connected. You just don't know what it's like to win. You just always lose. Oh, God, help me and you're making verdicts. The last thing said, uh, decide the results. You're not supposed to decide the results of your flesh. Man, this looks really bad. Really? Is God involved? Because if God involved, then if you look to the Bible, if you have no other way of finding this kind of information, go to the scriptures and see how many times it didn't look good for the children of Israel. Is that the verdict that they were supposed to accept? Hook, line, and sinker. You know, we have the propensity to do that as human beings. I mean, look at Adam and Eve. Did they ever go to the back door of the garden and try to get in? I mean, I know the front door was guarded by this big angel with double-edged swords. And the swords were a flame of fire. Okay, so you're not going to go in that way. Did they ever try to get back in? No. Did they ever repent? No, not as far as we have record. Which means what? They accepted their new shift in reality. Mm -hmm. They accepted the world of the flesh. How fast did the world of the flesh get out of control? Uh, three chapters from when Adam and Eve sinned. And all of a sudden, God's having to bring a, a man to a place of building a boat because he's getting ready to, well, kind of flood the earth. Come on, think of this. Our time's already gone. We're going to jump right back in here because simple is simple. You are who God made you and you can function exactly in that place of what God's made you. Not easy is how well you're so adjusted to the old world of the flesh and you will not conform. Ah, we're going to have to do something about that. Well, we will. Hey, we're out in Rochester, uh, uh, Minnesota. We were with Pastor Fred and Pastor Kelly. Wonderful, wonderful people. Boy, did we enjoy them this weekend and their people. So many good things happened. Amen. Watching people just get healed on the spot and their eyes just kind of looking really big and saying, wow, did you see that? That was awesome. And just wonderful things. Happen. It's just so fun to watch the presence of God. And you know, the whole time Aaron and I are ministering, we are having to believe in in that presence in order to release it to do the work. That's a part of this. It's simple. It's just not easy. We'll talk about that the next time. Hey, make sure you go to jimhockaday.com and find J-H-M-I at jimhockaday.com. We're going to have some testimonies. People are starting to write them in that said, well, you've been kind of bugging us about the testimonies, so here's mine. I am continuing to bug you about the testimonies because it brings encouragement. Oh, thank God it brings encouragement. Well, th these two ladies healed in their hips. Oh, glory. One guy feet popping, ankles popping by the presence of God setting them free. 
Why don't you have that happen to you right here, right now? We'll stop right now. We'll see you again soon. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Bless you. Bye, everybody.